Bonsoir. Welcome to SMQB's episode 175, brought to you by Assembly Software, the number one name in software. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. What's going on, Rooster? Not, not too bad. We're here for uh, our second week coverage of the Paris Olympics, and we're going to go with the same format we did last week, where we're going to talk in terms of our lassos and punchable faces. But before we get to that, Bison, who are you bringing to the bar? The one and only pummel horse guy, of course, uh, Stephen Nederostik. I have no idea if I said that right, but he is Nerd a man. Uh, American hero at this point. Um, he is, I guess he's legally blind, right? But I mean, he, when he puts his glasses on, he can see. Um, but I'm sure you've seen the guy around on, on the news if you've been watching anything about the Olympics. But it's a pretty cool story. Um, I don't think he was really even supposed to be on the team. Somebody got hurt, and that's how he got onto the team and then locked up the bronze medal on the pommel horse for the American team and then uh, got a bronze himself in the individual competition. So uh, it's Clark Kent. That's what they, they're referring to him as. Yeah. <laughs> good story. Good story. Pope, I feel like this is about the time you're going to ask us if we've ever heard of Jay-Z. Who are you bringing <laughs> to the bar? I didn't study up on my rappers before today's uh, episode. <laughs> Uh, you guys have given me a shit enough that uh, it is time for me to take the one and only goat, uh, Novak Djokovic, to the uh, to the bar. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I knew I, it. I knew it. We knew Can't you were it forever. Him. We knew you loved him. Can't hide it forever. I, no, look. I mean, runner. I I will say that uh, that tennis on Sunday morning was some of the best I've seen in a long time. It was it was really good. And and the Joker uh, played as as good as he's played in a long time. Uh, hadn't won uh, hadn't won a tournament this year, and then he goes out and he wins the gold against uh, you know Alcaraz. And so um, he was very emotional, and I would really like to pick his brain about why the the gold medal for his country meant so much to him compared to the other you know twenty two or however many majors uh, that he's won over the years. And you're infatuated with this guy. Yeah, I think we're gonna do. You called it. You called I think it we're gonna do some Serbian shots while along the way. I bet Milk. you are. Milk, who are you taking to the bar? I'm taking uh, Kristen Faulkner. You all know who that is, right? I'm sure you sure. do. She won the women's road cycling event for uh, USA gold medal. First time we've medaled since 1984. Of course, that was. Nace's favorites, Connie Carpenter and Alexi Gruel back in, eight, in the <laughs> LA games. She wasn't even supposed to be in the event. Uh, Taylor Nib withdrew to focus on the triathlon. She popped in there and then just won the whole damn thing uh, for the first time in 30, what is that, 40 years. So uh, congratulations to her and have some shots uh, in celebration. All right. How about you, House? I know you guys are all in the Olympic spirit, but we've reached we've reached DEFCON 1 here in Philly. So I am closing all bars for the foreseeable future to anybody on the Philadelphia Phillies. No one is allowed to go to the bar. No one is allowed to drink. They've obviously been drunk for the last four weeks. So no one's going to the bar with me. No one's allowed at the bar. The Phillies need to get their head out of their, how do we say it in French, derriere? Is it panic mode oh, in I Philly? Like wow. Full Last panic. Year, full panic. panic full mode in Philly I can relate. I can relate. I was there God. not too long ago with the Yankees. Oh, what, what, what's what's the uh what's the damage? What what's happening with the Phillies? How many have they lost? They're still in first place. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah the amazing a lot. thing is that the National League blows. Somehow we still have the best record in baseball and in in no, the Guardians do, don't you? Guardians, oh, the Guardians do. Passed us? Yeah, they're twenty five. Good teams. This, they're they're this is a teams, Je Jedi mind trick. Two, yeah, two and eight in the last ten. Yeah, that's not not good. Mind. It's panic, panic. Yeah, it's panic. I am going to bring to the bar Shakari Richardson, and I would like to have a little chat with her about the irony of involved in the fact that four years ago she was banned for the for, for the Olympics for having a little weed in her system. And now it seems like the uh, the the guy you see everywhere you turn around at the Olympics is Snoop Doggy uh, Bong hit. I mean, for God's sakes, how, how do we go from 
banning Shakira. A lot's changed in four to years. Snoop in four years. <laughs> I agree, man. I agree. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Poor thing. Every every time she turns a corner, she's got to be reminded of it. Dude, by the way, Snoop doing the play by play in badminton is just fantastic. <laughs> How about Absolutely. him walking around like going to fine dining with uh, what's your name, um, the the blonde woman who went to jail for insider trading? What's Martha her name? Stewart. Martha, Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You see the one where yeah. she took him to some French, you know, woman. like white tablecloth restaurant, and he had no idea what to do. It was funny. Anyway, um, let's 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 get get to the Olympics uh, officially here, and start out with your favorite image so far from the Olympics. Bison, you mm. go first. Ooh, um, oh man, that's a tough one. Favorite image, you got me. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, Let I, I me guess, take this one. I guess Go ahead, Mel. No, 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 I, I guess it's the one behind me at this point. I mean, I, right. I, I don't know how. I'm still. I still don't understand who won this race. Looking at the at the uh, this is right. the picture behind me is of right. the men's 100 meters, the fastest man in the world, and um, I, I'm still looking at that picture trying to figure out how uh, Noah Lyles from the U.S was declared the winner i don't know right i guess your five torso, i guess they measure whose torso cross torso first. yeah because the jamaican's foot is clearly across the line way before anything else he had a concave lean thompson did yep. in yep. jamaica yep yep if and, you well, have not it, yet it, seen it prevents uh, you from throwing your arm out i mean that's mm. arm doesn't count if and they seen, have a uh, little thing the... going on too which i enjoy like they yes. don't like each other no so did you see the bbc coverage by michael johnson of the race Mm -mm. it's Mm -mm. i really recommend all of our listeners it is so so well done from the beginning of the race and all the splits along the way and particularly the ending that answers bison's question what how is it that we declared noah lyle's the winners bbc coverage on that 100 meter race was great well the nbc five 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 one thousandths of a second yeah I yeah, mean, we thought, that? and we thought F one was close. That's crazy, right? Yeah, that's that's, that's another one thousandth worth of one hundredth. Wow, it's basically a tie. And I, I was so gonna, what, what I is, was gonna punch what NBC. Rule? What? Wait a minute, though. What is the rule? Just for the listeners, what's the exact rule on on how they measure who 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 won? Torso. I think, I think torso. torso. Yeah, torso crosses the line. That's fairly vague and amorphous isn't it i mean so. feet don't count hands don't count heads don't count right because that um, would be you could put them out and it wouldn't be well used to right? used to they showed like people used to dive yeah right. like they're diving into first base like they dove yeah but you don't get the first base faster diving everybody knows that you run through the bag so that's that's that was a stupid play i don't know not with the bigger bags though <laughs> right bryce harper would disagree Huh, interesting. Yeah, no, it's, right. it's torso, and, and so one of my punches was, I, I don't know if you guys saw it live, but the NBC broadcaster, uh, late Duffy, Diffy, he, he said the Jamaican had won. Uh, he declared him the winner, you know. Before the Jamaican they had, thought he won, too, though. Before they had Everybody the photo finish. Everybody thought the Jamaican won. Yeah. I think Lyles thought oh, he no, won. No, no, Lyles. Lyles, him. Lyles, no, no, Lyles, if you, go, if you watch, Lyles goes up, and he puts his arm around him, and then they he points up like they're both waiting to see what happens. Lyle's I'm pretty congratulate. sure I saw Lyle say, congrats, you got it. Yeah. Right before. Yeah, definitely did. I th- Lyle's thought he, he was, he was silver. So I don't know. Wild though. That's gotta be the image of the Olympics so far. Right. I'm sure yeah. there's some other good ones. Who's got another one, right? Milk. Milk has one. Go ahead. Milk. No, mine's right, right behind me. Scheffler. Uh, I mean, the whole thing yesterday, the golf, I mean, the tennis was great. The golf was phenomenal because you went into Sunday thinking that this thing was over with Pope's buddy, John Rahm, with a massive lead. And what does Scheffler do just time and time again? The unbelievable year that he's had. He goes out and shoots a 60 freaking two. Like 29 on the back. I mean, 
it comes out. I mean, no one was even talking about him before the round started on on Sunday. Kind of, it, it was all Xander, and just his approach shots, the pressure. He gets in contention. He closes. It's what he's done all year. He's the number one golfer in the world. And uh, you know, I watched. I ended up keeping it on, watching the medal ceremony. But I mean, him breaking down at the end of the anthem. If, you know, if that doesn't get you, I mean, that's what it's all about. And uh, it was it was a really cool, cool moment and uh, a cool golf course, too, I thought. I thought that so, I mean, we got did, smoked there in the Ryder Cup. How, how did yeah. how did Rom collapse? I mean, what what happened? So had... <laughs> well, no. again, he uh, thought he thought the competition was over after 54 and he was pissed off that he had to play more golf on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but what, what what was the hole that he was – it was at 16, he was greenside and just a little swale, and he basically had a chili dip, and he didn't even get it up on the green, and he ended up uh, having a bad putt that led to a double bogey. I think that's what cost him a medal. It was that it cost one hole. a medal, was, not the gold. No, not the gold, but the medal. He would have medaled if he, if he doesn't yeah. double bogey that hole. Yeah. He just – He choked. He choked. He choked. I mean – Cham- Brandel Chambly said it was as big a choke as Rory at the U.S. Open. He said that collapse on the back nine. No, Rory to lose much a medal. Worse. <laughs> much worse. <laughs> well, I know for you it was. <laughs> no, it was. It was great. What's your favorite I, image so far? My my favorite image. I know this is going to upset Bison a little bit because he is he is an Uber Patriot. But the, my image was not at the Olympic grounds, but it was of all the people gathered in St. Lucia to watch Julian Alfred win that hundred meter race for the women oh, for the God. first medal ever for that country. And I think that's part of what's so fun about the Olympics. I mean, there's so many sports and people and countries that we would never, ever pay attention on any day of a calendar year, except once every couple of years when there's the Olympics and St. Lucia and many of these island countries, uh, the same day that St. Lucia got a gold medal, Dominica won a gold medal as well. Right. And so my first time for both countries. That was just awesome. Watching that little square in St. Lucia with all those people like it was the happiest day of their lives. I'm sure there's a lot of poverty, a lot of difficulties there. Well, yeah. And, that- and think about this. They had just come off uh, Hurricane Barrel, which. It didn't. It didn't completely decimate St. Lucia, but they got a lot of damage from it. So they exactly. That's a big pick me yeah. up. I like that. And we got what silver? Yeah, yeah. silver, silver Shikari. You know, yeah, Shikari had a silver. Going right. going back to Milk's uh, favorite image for Scheffler, it, it was fascinating to me that um, the top nine finishers, you know, because of the ties included 12 different countries in golf. So it just shows you, you know, this, this, the scope of, of the popularity of the Olympics. And that brings me to something that was out of our mailbag that I'd like to just talk about sh- briefly. An old, old friend of mine um, said, Hey, why are you guys even covering the Olympics? It's too political. You should stick to baseball essentially. Cool. And to that, I say, The world is too political. People are too political. People are so partisan now that every little event or statement, it becomes a personal grievance on one side or another. And I choose to celebrate these Olympics um, because of the athletes and what they exemplify. And we've seen Scotty Scheffler, Scheffler, you know, the number one golfer in the world has more money and he knows what to do with breaking down surely out of patriotism. And I think these athletes are showing us um, things, character traits that we once took for granted and now are lacking throughout the world. You know, hard work, perseverance, but more importantly, character, integrity, and sportsmanship. You remember sportsmanship? I mean, we weren't we all taught sportsmanship by our coaches when we were growing up sportsmanship is dead among politicians for sure in the world um but these athletes know sportsmanship and they're showing us they're re-showing us these these traits and i think it's beautiful and i think that's the beauty of the olympics 
for example, my favorite image behind me. The this notwithstanding the terrible behavior of some of the North Korean athletes towards the South Koreans on different podiums, this South Korean athlete decided, I want to, I want a selfie with my my people to the north. You know, these guys have probably have families on either side of the DMZ. It's it's, it's a totally arbitrary line. And they have ancestors and families on each side of the line. And this athlete is putting politics aside and saying these are fellow athletes basically from the same country at one time or another our families sure thought that way you know generations ago and we need to put that aside for a day and just celebrate our victories together and there was a story uh from one of the from one of the world events of a moroccan distance runner who was a distant second to one of the one of the african runners i think he was Kenyan and he and he the the finish line is in sight and he sees that the Kenyan has stopped short because he's missed the finish line he thinks he's hit the finish line and he's stopped and the Moroccans yelling at him keep going keep going keep going but they don't speak the same language so he pushes him across the finish line ahead of him and people are like you could have won that race what are you doing and his answer was something along the lines of where's the merit in that he clearly was the winner. There's no honor in that win if I just passed him and kept going. That's what the Olympics are about, and that's what people need to you know, wake up and see. And, and, and Rooster, my... to, to your point, I just want to add one, one part of that, too, because one of the things that keeps striking me in, in the Olympics is the, the sheer joy um, that people show when they – when they come in second or third, when, when they're on that podium and I'm the guy who says, if you're not first, you're last, but I'll suspend that for the Olympics because <laughs> you, you just see the, the, the sheer joy for anybody who gets on a podium. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they, it's really pretty cool. They don't seem like the people who miss out by a 10th of a second or whatever. I mean, I'm sure that's hard, but at the same time, they look so just, you know, gleeful and, and content to be on the podium period. Uh, so, so that's that's pretty cool too. Bison, I have a I have a question for you and everybody else. Someone sent this great text question to me. You can change it to any medal versus gold medal because maybe the answer changes. But which would you guys rather have, an Olympic medal, or be a kicker that makes a field goal in a Super Bowl, and so you have a Super Bowl ring? Kicker. Yeah, you're the kicker. You're the kicker on a Super Bowl winning team. You'd rather be the kicker? Hell yeah. I, I don't know. Wait, I don't does know. my kick I'd, I'd take the Olympic does my medal. Kick win the Wait, Super Bowl? my kick wins the Super Bowl? We're not saying it wins the Super Bowl. You just you you well, made a kick. You 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 scored a field what? goal in a Super Bowl. You're the we starting kicker by, on the Super Bowl. We could have won by 40 points then, and it wouldn't be re- irrelevant. What are we talking about here? Ping yeah, pong. You have a ring. You have a ring, and you, you have a ring. So you're asking, would I rather have a ring or a medal? Essentially. Would you rather be Garo Yepremian or Mark Spitz? I yeah. take Mark Spitz every time. <laughs> I would, I would, I would like to have a gold medal from Paris. Patrick, a piece of the Eiffel Tower. Ro- Rooster, will you explain to to Milk who Mark Spitz is? Yeah, who is <laughs> you know, he, you know who Mark Spitz is, don't you? I know who Mark Spitz is. Do you know who Garo is? Yeah, he was the the triathlete. Yeah. Do you know who <laughs> yes, Garo? No. Oh, come on! Oh, come on! No, he was no. Michael Phelps before there was Michael. He ran Phelps. the hundred yes. meters. No, no, he was a right. He was. Yes. He, was he ran it in the pool. All, do you guys all want a medal, or do one of you want to win? I'm the taking Super Bowl? a. I'm taking a gold medal. Is it gold or kicker. bronze? Is it gold or bronze? Well, maybe that makes a difference. I still think. I think what Bison's saying is is true. I think this is the time that you can suspend the Ricky Bobby rule. That if you're, you know, not first, you're last. I think a bronze medal. The way it moved some of these, like the girl Jefferson that took third on the hundred meter run. Oh my God, she was so for the women's. She was so so emotional over that. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Well, some I mean, of these young they, runners are running against their yeah. idols. You know, right, right, and they're just they're just very very happy just to get on the podium. That's all. Well, they've they been practicing for four years for right. one moment. Like, I mean, look, one shining anything, moment anything away from like Shuffler. Cause I thought that was an unbelievable moment, but these guys do play professional golf every weekend. Right. So it's like, 
These right. people are literally practicing four years for like this second, ten, this 100 meter well, dash. That, and you know, Milk, that was one of the things that was kind of cool about the pommel horse guy. I don't know if anybody saw his interview after and, and you know, he he was like preaching, you know, how great gymnastics is and was saying, you know, I hope you know, because they asked him, like, how does it feel to be a hero back in America now or something like that? And he was he just said he's like, I just hope, you know, if this gets people interested in gymnastics and they turn it on. It's a really fun sport. There's great competitors, amazing athletes. And it, it was true. I mean, you know, they, they are, they, you know, even if they're competing on a regular basis, it's certainly not in any kind of limelight like the Olympics. Right. I mean, you, you did you even know there would be like, you know world championships and gymnastics every year who, who knew that i mean other than maybe simone biles getting some some attention on it but so you're i mean you're right it's these guys are just, they're just competing and this is the height of it for uh for them Mister, so, could, could i say something about the sportsmanship that you mentioned yes go this, ahead my, my my second favorite i've had uh, so many favorite images already from the olympics but my second one just happened today i don't know if you guys caught this from the floor exercise of the women's and uh, this very beautiful and accomplished gymnast who has had the misfortune of being a, a, a female gymnast at the same time Simone Biles has been in the world, this Rebecca Andrade from Brazil. Yep. So today she finally got to the top. She won the floor exercise and got the gold and the silver and bronze were won by American Simone Biles and Jordan Childs. And if you didn't see the medal ceremony, when Rebecca Andrade takes the podium to get the gold, both Simone Biles and Jordan Childs are so happy for her. They know how much it meant to her that they bow down and worship her on the medal stand. And they're like, you know, like kind of the whole we're not worthy. That's awesome. That's what sportsmanship's about. That's their competitor. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go around the horn and just uh, share, share with the audience your favorite lasso or your favorite punchable face or both from the last week. Go ahead, Bison. Yeah. So I, I'm going to give a shout out. I'm going to be a little bit of a homer on this and go with the, the athletes from the DMV, um, <laughs> the, the DMV being DC, Maryland and Virginia. Uh, I don't know if you, if anybody saw this, but there was a stat that said if Montgomery County, Maryland were a country, it would be in the top 50 for gold for medals of all time, Olympic medals, um, which is pretty staggering. But I, I mean, these are these are some of the uh, Americans who have who are from the DMV that have been com- competing. First of all, you have Phoebe Bacon, Aaron Gamel, and uh, and uh, uh, Katie Ledecky, all from from the one school I mentioned last week, Stone Ridge. Uh, Tori Husk is from Arlington. Um, you've got, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the, the 100, 100 meter, meter winner. Yeah, yeah. The 100 meter winner. Uh, uh what's Virginia. his name? Lyles. Noah He's Lyles. From Virginia. Noah Lyles is from Virginia. Um, uh, they didn't really counter, but, but Rodman, Tiffany Rodman or Trinity Rodman, uh, is, is plays for the Washington, um, spirit, the MLS, t- the, the women's team here, uh, in the DC area. I mean, then you've got you've got Kevin Durant. Um, uh, I'm trying to see. I mean, there's there's a list of them. It just goes on and on of these of these uh, these people, including the 16 year old kid who's on the four by 400 relay team, um, Quincy Wilson. So you know, it's pretty it's pretty bananas. And I don't know, go hometown. It, it's amazing how well the uh, the athletes from this area have done. House. What do you have? Um, I'm going to start with a punch. I don't know if you guys heard this story. We've t- already talked a lot about the 100-meter women's race. But you, uh, y- you may not know that the, um, the woman, Shelly um, Frazier-Jones, I think is her name, the Jamaican – who pulled out of that race. Everyone was surprised not to see her. There was an empty lane during that race. And Shikari Richardson may not have won that race. I don't know if you heard, but the organizers at the Paris Olympics uh, would not 
let them on there where they were located the way you could get there you wasn't like a team bus or something so they would have had to and shikari richardson did walk a mile to the stadium where the race was being held because there was no transportation that was arranged for them and that was why fraser jones pulled out she thought that it would affect her preparation by having to expend the energy to walk a mile to the stadium before running a 100-meter race. It just so turns out that I think most people haven't heard enough about is that Shikari Richardson still pulled off that silver medal after having walked a mile of her own to get to the stadium. And I just hmm. think there have been other stories like that. Um, is there not again, an Olympic village where they're all staying? I mean, where, what's the deal? There is. It, it it says that Shelly and Shikari didn't stay in the Olympic Village. And since they – and they were denied entry and the gate for the athletes, so they were forced to walk to the front gates and then had to walk all the way back to where the athletes warm up. So they missed warm-ups, essentially. What asshole um, did that? It's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah. Um, I I have to say – I have mixed views on this whole Noah Lyles thing. And we could probably talk about that whole race for the whole pod. I do think what the guy said, which I think we punched him for long ago on this pod, when he said, well, why are they calling the NBA champion world champions? There's, there's no like international flags in the game. They're they're playing just, just there in the USA. Like where's all the flags we race against the flags. We're world champions. And uh, I found I found it pretty funny uh, that all the USA basketball team was there for the hundred meter race, probably to see what is one of the marquee events. But I, I think they were also waiting to see whether Noah Lyles, Lyles was going to have to eat crow. I got to give that guy credit. Like he talked the talk and then he yeah, ran the race. He's a yeah. one man PR team, that's back, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you do you know his story house? A little bit, yeah. I, I saw some of the uh, the backstory during the race. Yeah, I mean, he got a bronze in Tokyo, and he he was coming off antidepressants in Tokyo, yeah. which affected his performance. And the reason he was on antidepressants is because he became very depressed during COVID and during the whole George Floyd thing. It just really affected him emotionally, and he got very depressed. And so he went on these antidepressants, and he was coming off of them uh, as they were going into Tokyo. Uh, but he also has ADD, and he's got all kinds of issues that he's he's overcome, you know, to get there. And, and I guess, asthma. He's got terrible asthma. Yeah. And what I saw this morning was um, his uh, his main physio guy was like, I've got a good feeling. I think you're going to get it, you know, fight for every centimeter. Because these guys, I mean, when you talk about a game of inches, I mean, five one thousandths of a second. It's all the training, everything he does, just just to get that one piece of your torso. It's amazing. I have a question for you, House. Do you know who Vashti Cunning- Cunningham is? Yes, Vashti Cunningham is Randall Cunningham's daughter. Yeah, and I think she's um, she's a high, high jumper. jumper. Yeah, yes, she's a high jumper. Olympics? I think she took. Yeah, I think she took fifth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. It's interesting. It's interesting. She was behind uh, the Ukrainian model. Who I'm sure Milk will be talking about. By the way, I did like on the hundred meter that like the seventh place or whatever the American, the uh, we had two of the or top three, right? Or yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So there was like a third that was like Curly. seven that would have been on the podium in Tokyo. Like that's seven, how... seven out of nine beat the world record. I think. Yeah, yeah. Like how crazy this one was. Same with swimming, Milk. Milk, you have a punch or a lasso you want to share with us? Well, I, I was I thought House was gonna do this. Are we are we because last week we were talking about the the, the river sin, right? Complete yeah, oh, right, 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 right. we follow-up we like, to this, that. This can't be good. This will end poorly. <laughs> and then they they do it, they do the triathlon or whatever. And what happens two days later? I, is this person still alive, by the way? <laughs> Develop some sort of I illness. Look like- I yeah I don't know. Gollum from they, the Lord been, of the Rings. She's been, been, uh, been, been detained. In they the went toilet. forward with it today, by the way, at eight a.m. Yeah, uh, local. No, time, but the so Belgian the Belgian team pulled out because their 
one of their triathletes is in the hospital with E. coli. But we won't know for at least two days whether or not someone dies from today's. It's event. disgusting. Is it? So, was it actually E. coli? Is that? Is that yes. A diagnosis? Yes. Okay. I haven't sure. heard that. Yet. Been in the hospital Ew. four days. Ew. <laughs> She's, but they're like, yeah, we got to keep, we got to do it again. Well, let's go. We got to move forward with it. You, you know, every, whoever decided that the best way to get rid of sewerage is to, is to have it flow down rivers and, and into oceans, they should all be punched. It's, it's just disgusting. Pope, <laughs> what do you have? Well, we, we kind of alluded to it a little bit, but it got uh, really filled out uh, during the week. Uh, the men's gymnastics team, uh, just amazing mm. story, backstories, mm. right? My, the two guys, you know, we've talked about uh, Nerdorowski or whatever, but the, the two guys that really stuck out to me uh, was Brody Malone, who's the captain uh, from Georgia. Who, so the guy's uh, mom died? Yeah, his mom yeah, died of cancer in 2012, and he dedicated his, you know, basically his gymnastic career to to her because she's the one who got him involved in gymnastics and his father uh and met his mother and and i guess they were both doing equestrian events and so they you know were already kind of had that olympic spirit but um his father was there with the family and his father's actually engaged uh to be uh to be married and and they showed brody after and you gotta remember brody in the preliminaries was awful I mean, he he was really hurting the team. He didn't qualify for any of the individual finals, which was very unusual for him. But he came through in the team event in a big way and helped him to get that bronze. And so when they showed him uh, going up to his father, gave him the uh, took the medal off and gave it to his father, who uh, put it around his neck and you know it was a very emotional moment. I thought that was extremely cool. And, you know, the other story that I thought was really neat is is uh, Fred Richard, Freddie Flips, uh, the the black um, athlete gymnast from uh, University of Michigan, who has been his entire he talked about has an, his entire career as a gymnast. He's the only guy or one of the few that looks like him. And he's big time social media influencer has basically said he's dedicating his Olympics and his social media and all that. He's trying to get more black gymnasts involved, uh, both men and women, through his um, through his you know achievements as well as social media. So he's really a, a cool guy to watch because he's young and he'll be around for a while. Well, I'd like to wrap this up by giving a lasso to Paris, notwithstanding the health conditions of the Sen. Um, you know, if you if you remember back to Tokyo. These, these track meets were run in essentially empty stadiums mm -hmm. and Paris has been like a, you know, like two weeks of, of the biggest rock and roll band in the world playing every day. And people, people are just, you know, mobbing to the, to the events and it just has gone off really without a hitch. It's such a the, cool venue for the, for the, yeah, it's, I, I love the fact that they're not, stuck to all these you know stadiums and places that they built just especially for the olympics that they'll never use again i love the fact that they're doing it in the city it's i just think they've done a wonderful job and and uh and i and i i give them a uh lasso for for the for how awesome it's been you oh, got any good. anything else Go ahead. Well, I, I've got I've got one that I'm I'm not sure we're going to have to figure out if it's a punch or a lasso, but you know the French mm. pole vaulter. <laughs> oh, what oh, what happened here? What is this? Who, what know. happened there? Who, who? Well, you know, oh, he well, didn't get yeah, over. You, Pope, you explain this, Pope. On no his, one better than Pope to explain this because he has similar issues. On his, what? He, well, yeah, on his third, <laughs> <laughs> on his third attempt, uh, whatever, however tall it was. His third attempt, uh, he cleared it, but for uh, one uh, one issue, which was his package was just a little bit too too big for the event, and he and he knocked the pole over uh, with his uh, protruding package. Oh, and and really? since then, he's become quite an Instagram and you know social media star in France. Uh, obviously, lots of women are interested in uh, <laughs> in hooking up with him. So I'm not sure if it's a punch because, you know, maybe you should have done a little bit more with your package and made sure it wasn't going to disqualify you. Or is it a lasso because he is now a French hero? 
Wow. I'm giving him a lasso. Yeah. <laughs> Mel, get off the internet for one second and tell us uh, what you were about to say. I was well. I've he was trying it. to Google the the, sound- fr- the French the French uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not- it's Wait, like he's, he's, he's got the he's got the out. Ukrainian model supermodel uh, high jumper. Uh, no, I was just going to say to Rooster's, to Rooster's point on the locations, how cold it was because I was I was highly interested in the uh, Italy USA beach volleyball uh, yesterday. I'm sure we yes. all were. And yes. it's just so cool that it's right behind the Eiffel Tower. So to the men's point, or the women's milk? Uh women's. It was definitely okay, gotcha. it was just an excellent clarify. match. Just want yeah. to clarify. Unfortunately, the US match. unfortunately the USA won, but you know, good for good for them. <laughs> All right. Anything else on the Olympics? I, I, have you guys seen a su- sport during this Olympics that you never really paid a lot of attention to that kind of like caught your interest because for me like i never really paid any attention at all now that now that they've got this quad box thing where you can watch four sports at the same time which is so great because it allows you to see sports that you don't normally see yeah I let's really see other ones of... on peacock yeah well sorry oh, don't get me but started handball if you guys have watched any of these handball matches they're they're handball. intense and very very physical and fun cool i like handball now i think i might I might try out for the handball team. Shockingly but, uh, for me, it's synchronized diving. I'm just what? amazed. Wow. I'm wow. amazed that these people can pull off I that degree it. of synchronization that high up in the air. I mean, this is I'm amazed by the ability to do that. Well, I listen, I, I gotta bring it back to what where I talked about last week because <laughs> I think yes, I think Pope wants to hear a little bit more. First of all, we can't talk about breaking without mentioning Pope. You know him. You love him. DJ Cool Herc, also known as Clive Campbell, who was the inventor of break dancing back in the 70s in New York. Um, so Herc was 16 Wait, that's back when old. Rooster was going to Studio 54. Yeah, right. man. Herc was 16 years old. He kicked it off with a little James Brown sex machine. That is the history of break dancing. And now here we are. By the way. Probably the best place to watch any of the events have been at the uh, Place de la Concorde, where they're doing three-on-three basketball as well as breaking. Um, so, you know, look, it's it's Friday and Saturday. I know people have been asking all week, when do where is the break dancing? Did I miss it? Did I did I miss, no? You did not miss it. It starts August 9th, 10 a.m. Eastern time. You have, have the they had preliminaries the yet. B-Girl qualification on August 9th, followed by the B-Girl final from 2 to 4. And then you've got the men, the B-Boys fi- uh, qualifying on August 10th from 10 to 12, and the B-Boy final from 2 to 4. However, just one thing to know, do not call Phil Wizard, Logistics, or Sonny by their name B-Boy or B-Girl. They prefer just their actual breaking names of Bill Wizard, Logistics, and Sonny. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't screw that up if you want to sound like you know what you're talking about. Um, so that's it. I mean, I that's the last thing I got to say. That that's the one we, I'm looking forward to. That's, How's our and squad I'll bet looking? You that is useful phenomenon. information. Thank you, Bison. Do, are we? I'll are bet we? You it's a do we have a squad? Are we going to win this? I mean, yeah. We, hell yeah. No yeah, way. So QB boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. As long, All right, during, listen. As long as during a throwdown there's no biting, then uh, we should be good. And if you need, want to know what that means, you're going to have to look it up. Guys, are we going to win the basketball gold? Because yes. the next pod, we are you sure? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. It's going to be uninteresting. We will win. Would, yeah, I agree. Would that be like uh, to you, NBA guys? If they don't win the gold, is that like. A massive crushing, like, huge, kind of huge upset. Like, that would, okay. Yes, I mean this is okay. the dream team. They're going around whatever. saying they're better than the dream team, right? Okay, wow, that's not the case. All right, that's a listen. I mean, we got all, we got all those team sports that will decide. Uh, you know, men's and women's soccer, a bunch of stuff coming, coming ahead, and and we got the decathlon. We got we got we got a lot of good stuff. Coming. We got wrestling. Hey, to satisfy my friend who told us we should stick to baseball, let's talk about baseball for a couple of minutes. It's uh, I'd know, rather we're, not. We're in the dog days of summer here, and it's to me, it's a bizarre um, 
the the AL East, the Yankees and the Orioles are tied, I think, at 66 and 46, or at least they were this morning. The Guardians are 67 and 43 atop, atop the uh, Central. With that, at that point, the best record in baseball. You had the West with the Mariners and the Astros, both with 53 losses. And the East, the Phillies are ahead in the National League with 45 losses. Brewers in the Central, 48 losses. And in the West, the Dodgers with 47 losses. And it seems like every one of these leaders, except for maybe the Guardians, has had a terrible losing streak this year. The Phillies are in the midst of one right now. The Yankees look like they were just the worst team in baseball for a couple of weeks. And yet they're still in first place. What's going on? What? What, what is there? Are these divisions just too top heavy right now? And there's not enough competition. What's going on? I think Bison, uh, when he, you know, put a little hex on me at the All Star break, saying <laughs> the Phillies were done. I, I actually think he was on to something a little bit. A lot of these top teams have really faltered since the All Star break. I think it messes up your mojo. I, I mean, I look. I'm not a baseball player, but these guys were in a groove. The pitchers were in a groove. They were on a schedule. They were on a regimen. It gets interrupted. And almost throughout both leagues, since the All-Star break, all the top leading teams have really stunk since the All-Star break. I don't know. Is that the reason? Yeah. I, I don't well, know. look, I mean, I mean, Hal, oh. you, you're, you're right in this regard. I mean, baseball is a rhythm. It's a groove game, right? I mean, that's why the team that you have to worry about going into the postseason the most is whoever's playing the best, right? I mean, that's why you right. see some of these wild card teams, um, you know, advance past the wild card when they when you wouldn't expect them to, but it's because they had to bite, scratch, and claw their way in, and they're hitting their stride. So, I mean, baseball is very much a rhythm sport, and when you get moving, you just want to keep going. You don't want to stop for anything. All right, let's. Move I mean, on. the Yankees. The Yankees have the best record uh, in the last ten in it's, the majors right now. Right, so which it's is, like they're coming out of their slump, which is amazing. As everybody Cons else is going into one. Yeah, considering the starting pitching is terrible, and um, you know, but well, Lemayhew, when you, it, Rooster, when you have the when you have the greatest hitter on the planet on your team, that helps. That's true, and well, two of them really. Yeah, oh two my of God. them. Yeah. Bartender. Uh, Can we talk well, about how shitty the ALS is? That could uh, be one of the worst divisions ever. It's it's unbelievable. I mean, it, we just put Scherzer back on the uh, DL for fifteen. He's got fatigue. I mean, I don't know if he'll ever if he'll ever pitch uh, to where he was again. The strategy uh, of of paying a ton of money for injured older pitchers is just never going to work again because of the the. Tear wear and tear on these guys' arms. I mean, the, there's no there's no one out there pitching like Tom Glavin or Greg Maddox anymore. They're all throwing smoke. Yeah, and coming up with new pitches all the time. You can't pitch like that when you're when you're that age. You just can't do yeah. it. Well, and it's not even the it's not even the smoke. It's the you know all this focus on uh, spin rate and all that yeah. is making yeah. these guys torque everything so much more. I mean, they're so focused on upping that spin rate i think that's putting a lot of stress on the on their arms too yep yep yeah i'll tell All you right, what the wild cards are very exciting i mean there are yeah. so many so many teams still in it are the rays well, still the in rays it are still alive really huh that's not exciting let's move on to buzzer beaters <laughs> 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 who's got a buzzer pope it's not exciting a buzzer well i mean it it just came over the wire i don't know uh uh, how how much truth there is to it, but it looks like the Steelers may be on the verge of getting Brandon Ayuk from the Whoa. Niners. Oh, Steelers, wow! Yeah, I yeah. thought it was gonna be the Patriots oh. or the Browns. No, it's Steelers. Oh, wow, so at wow. least they're they're in the they're they're in the catbird seat, according to what I just read. Too bad he has Russell Wilson throwing in the court the football. Or Justin, Justin Fields. Maybe. I think it's Fields gonna be Justin Fields. I thought he was hmm. starting. Interesting. Uh, he's starting for the first game. He is. Yeah, first game. Then he's. Mm. Um, Milk. Interesting. Milk, you have a buzzer? Yeah, not really. Okay. House. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do. Hold on. Right, I do have right, one. I want right. I wanted to bring this up during the Olympics. So I'm 
I love Simone and Suni or, and all, they have done phenomenal in gymnastics, but did you guys hear their excuses for why they lost today on the balance beam? That no. there wasn't enough crowd noise? Oh, Does anyone understand that? Mm, that's bad. They they couldn't get into rhythm because it wasn't loud enough. I didn't like that. I just wanted to throw it out there. I love Interesting. Them. That sounds like a milk like, slap. Just say you fell off the beam. You just milk slapped two of our uh, <laughs> gymnasts. Wow. No, that's why I saved it for the buzzer beater. It's not a slap. All right, House. Buzzer. I, I you know, I, uh, my image for today, if, if our YouTube watchers see it, is uh, Joel Embiid playing it up to the crowd. And I just got to say, that guy is hilarious. I mean, love him, hate him, whatever. The French obviously hate him. They feel spurned by him. And if you watch that Puerto Rico game and he was hamming it up and they were booing him and then he would make a shot and he was hold hold his hand to his ear. And at the end of the game, they were booing even louder. And he was like whipping them up to make more noise only to shoot like a half court air ball. The guy is hilarious. And I think it's good for the Olympics. And I think it's good for USA basketball. Like why so serious? It's great. I, I It beats hilarious. You know what I love about House is – he he really has no concept of what a homer he is. Yeah, no I concept. Do. <laughs> None. I do. <laughs> None that's whatsoever. An American home. That's an American homer. Uh, I still think it's funny that France thinks that he should be playing for them. Like, right. Like, what is that? Like, God. <laughs> that's the ultimate colonial image. <laughs> right. Like, you, you became a citizen like a year ago. Come on. Right. Bison, you have a buzzer. Well, I think this is um, I think this is from this week. I don't remember if, if this news was out when we had the last pod, but I just want to mention Carlos Sainz uh, in F1 going to Williams oh. mm -hmm. next year. Uh, he signed with Williams, which, you know, it, most people look at Williams as one of the bottom feeder teams. I think for anybody who's started watching F1 since Drive to Survive and is sort of new, which certainly is me, um, but, you know, Williams as a team has a long – um, and really pretty proud history. And it seems like this, to, I was listening to an, to an interview and they were saying that this commitment to a top driver uh, has got the whole, the whole team fired up uh, moving forward. And of course, it's not going to happen next year because of where the car regulations are, but keep an eye on Williams for 2026 when the new, uh, the new cars come out. And uh, let's see how Carlos Sainz does with that team. Maybe he'll bring him back to a little glory. I'm going to go well, for, Williams. Hat. For my buzzer, I wanted to say hats off to the newest uh, NFL Hall of Fame inductees, Julius Peppers. Seems like just yesterday that guy came out of UNC. I, I mean, it just time flies. So annoying. Andre yeah. Johnson, Devin Hester, the first kick return specialist to get into the hall. Uh, I think Billy White Shoes Johnson should be following him now. Uh, Dwight Freeney what about, and Patrick. What about Will. B. Mitch? Yes, Brian B. Mitchell. Brian Mitchell, more, even more yards even, from scrimmage than anyone in in NFL history. Then if Devin put has to Mitch put a in. plug in for B. Mitch Homer. during his speech, Homer. Um, but there were also um, some senior uh, members, Randy Gratishar and Steve McMichaels. I know you guys know McMichaels oh. from uh, the Bears. What a, the that Bears was shuffling cool crew has got did. ALS now. But yeah. let me ask you this. You guys know uh, what team Randy Gratishar played for? He was the 1978 Defensive Player of the Year. Was he on the Broncos? Yes. Come on. Wow. He, he was wow. awesome. You guys know this shit. He was Old guys. Awesome. Old guys for the win. God. He's awesome. It's a, it's a shame that he was not, not in the hall before now. He was really good. I don't know and if y'all saw the ceremony. The orange for crush, Steve Michael. Yeah, that was a really yeah, nice was, ceremony. Was, they the did it at, his, at his bedside. Yeah, yep. it was really cool. Mm. Yep, yep. They, and he got a jersey for him. I, I mean, a, a jacket for him. Jacket. All right. Uh, anyone else have a buzzer or anything else you want to cover? Go USA. Let's get some more. All buttons. right. Adieu. Yeah. Until next week. Adieu. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. See. You.